Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today I'm gonna teach you how to keep crickets alive longer. This is probably one of my most asked questions on my beer dragon videos and other videos as well. If you own lizards or anything that eats crickets and you you get them from the pet store, you go buy, you buy 100 crickets and they're half dead on the way home and you're wondering why is this happening? Well, the simple answer is because they're almost already dead at the pet store. So right here, I have a thousand crickets. I just got them in the mail. They, were, they spent three days in circulation around the postage, going through the mail, going through states, wherever it came from to here. Now, a lot of times pet stores, what they do is they do the same thing, except they don't buy just a thousand, they buy like, buy like 10,000, 20,000. All of those crickets then get to the store and they're dehydrated, they're hungry, they're starving. They get inside of a giant cage where they keep the crickets and inside that giant cage, like a pet smart, they have those little cubes those little water cubes, ones that are supposed to be food. That is not, not enough hydration, it's not natural food to keep them alive, so they just start dying off. They'll try to eat that and they're gonna walk around and be like, man, I'm so hungry, I'm so thirsty, and they're gonna dehydrate and die. So essentially, you're buying crickets that are already on the way out. When you get them in your car and you're getting them home and you put them inside of like a cricket keeper, they're pretty much looking for a place to call it quits. So what you can do is you could get them, have one of these in your car, Go ahead and have it all set up. Have some romaine lettuce in there, some carrots, something for them to get some hydration. Don't put a water bowl in there because a lot of times they're just, not gonna, they're just gonna drown. So put something in there like romaine lettuce that is just full of water and they can eat on it, get the hydration they need and be totally fine. Now before we get to the step-by-step -step guide on how I keep my crickets alive for so long, I do wanna talk about the smell. Now, when people come over to my house, they don't smell crickets at all. They walk in and they don't even, it, it, literally my cricket uh, shelf is right above me where I breed my crickets and I keep my crickets. No one ever knows I have crickets. They don't ever say like, whoa, it smells like a zoo in here. Why is that? Because my crickets don't die. My crickets, I have, basically it's gonna be bioactive tank for the crickets. But my crickets don't die. And that is usually the cause of the smell. If you have a set of crickets and you grab that body and you bring it close to your nose, you're just like, whoo! It's not gonna smell good. I know it's crazy, but when a cricket dies, it smells absolutely atrocious. So if you keep your crickets alive, you don't have to worry about smell too much. For instance, my crickets don't smell at all in the open, but you just get a little close, and they do have a faint smell. Not real bad at all, just a little bit of a smell. But it's not like how some people describe, and I've, I know what the description they're talking about, the god-awful smell. Now, for one, you can keep your crickets in something like this. Yes, it is kind of small, but make sure you put egg crates or something in here for your crickets to have more room to walk around in. The crickets are cannibals. They will eat each other. They will nibble on each other. They'll attack each other. What I keep mine in is a Walmart tank. This is a fish tank from Walmart, it's 10 gallons. Comes with the lid, the lid's actually separate. It was like $10 now, I think it's like $20 for the lid. Inflation, but I have this 10 gallon tank. It is see-through and crickets do like it dark. Do I keep them in the dark? I do not. They're hardy. Like I said, they're gonna stay alive. Once they're staying alive, I'm totally fine with that. You can darken the size if you want to. You don't have to, I don't. Also crickets do like it a little bit warmer. So I do keep mine up high above all my tanks with the heat uh, lamps like you see behind me, where the heat lamps are going. So it does get hotter up there. It's around 80 degrees and they do very well and they breed very well on that. And another thing I do, I Googled this and I was like, whoa, this is interesting because I keep mine at high humidity. I kind of have it a little bit higher humidity. 50 to 70% is what my humidity is at in the cage. And these crickets do well. Right now I do have a lot of baby animals and a lot of growing animals. So like I ran through crickets like crazy. That's why I had to buy a new set. But during the winter months, I pretty much stock up. I breed my crickets because not all my animals are in brumation, so they don't eat, so it's a little easier. But during that entire time, my crickets will last and not die out at all. Okay, though, now that all that information is out of the way, let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you step by step how I make a cricket house to keep my crickets alive for the entire time. That includes diet. Let's get into this. Okay, so I have my empty enclosure, and again, you don't have to use a 10 gallon tank. You can use a storage tub that's pretty tall or anything else. But what I like to do is I like to make some substrate for my crickets, and you can use Reptisoil for this if you want to, you can buy it at PetSmart, but I like to go to Lowe's and Home Depot and buy Topsoil and Play Sand. Really my favorite mix is peat moss and Play Sand, and mix those together at like a 60, 40, 70. I have a video on this on my channel as well if you wanna check it out, but like 70, 30 ratio. And if you can see things moving around, those are isopods, little uh, cleanup crew to eat the poop of everything that poops around, and they live in this dirt. So I just go ahead and take the dirt and I dump in about two to three inches of substrate. And you're probably gonna see leaves in the substrate as well, that's just for the isopods. But as you can tell, it's kind of, it looks tall, but it's not really, it's only three inches tall of substrate. And this is what the substrate looks like. Now, if you get Reptisol and Reptisane and mix those together, it will look like this. 
And then I get some leaf litter, and this is good for the crickets too, because if you forget to feed them, they will eat the leaves, and the isopods will eat the leaves too, and then the isopods will eat the cricket poop. But I cover the entire bottom of the enclosure with the leaves. I kind of crumple them up, spread them around, make sure it covers the top. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna trap humidity in the soil, so that way humidity stays a good constant 50 to 70%. Now before I throw the crickets in, I do like to go over the leaves with some water and I just spray it down. I spray it pretty good. I make sure the leaves are kind of soaking wet so that way if the crickets get out and they are thirsty, they can just drink the water off the leaves. Now for the crazy part. What I like to do is I like to open this up, but there's like these little flaps and I cut those flaps off so that way I can just dump the box in the enclosure and I don't have to worry about the little flaps getting in my way, closing, the crickets getting on them, jumping out, that sort of thing. So as you can see here, I'm just cutting those off. And here we go. As you can tell, I just dump in the entire box of crickets. There's so many, 1,000 dropping in there. I had to slap the box a couple of times to get them all out of there. But there they are. And it, since it does come with egg crates, I just go ahead and move those to the side. You can actually buy egg crates at Walmart in like the pet section. A lot of Walmart sell egg crates. You can buy them online too. I have those linked in the description. And these are all the crickets. Now, if you see on the corner there, there's a potato. And there's what they this company does, I love ordering from them. They're called Top Hat Crickets. But they put they cut up a potato and they put them in the cricket containers. That way when they ship, they don't dehydrate and they don't starve to death and they eat this. All of my crickets arrive like alive every time. So after that, I do feed the crickets probably every two days, but I pretty much just make sure they have food constantly. And that's one very important thing. You need to make sure they have food constantly. So I like to feed my baby carrots and romaine lettuce. The romaine lettuce is extremely good for hydration. It's, the crickets will devour it and they will get hydrated alone. So you don't have to put a water bowl. You don't have to worry about that at all. The romaine lettuce will hydrate the crickets perfectly. And as you can tell, I put another old egg crate in there. So that way it just gives them more room to run around. And I just toss it in there. And after like two days, if the baby carrots are still in there, you can take those out so that way they don't mold. However, if you do have isopods, you don't have to at all. But if you put isopods in there, the isopods will also eat the carrots as well. And that's all you have to do to keep crickets alive. I hope this video helped. If it did, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.